so what was it uh, that first captured your imagination about uh, the scene that you documented in Wild Style and uh, gave you a sense that it would have that impact on people when they saw it? Well, the first thing was visual, that I, I was always involved in the art world here in New York. And um, New York City in the 70s, you couldn't look anywhere in the city and not see graffiti tags everywhere. Um, so we were sort of in an environment of uh, writers and writing and a uh, kind of visual explosion, which to me... Uh, reminded me of some of the abstract expressionists and reminded me of the kind of street level of creativity that was going on. And I got to meet Lee Quinones, who I consider the very best of the graffiti artists. At that time, um, I was doing an art show in Times Square in a massage parlor in Times Square. It's called the Times Square Art Show. And um, this tall, handsome guy with dark sunglasses approached me and I later got to know him as Fab Five Freddy and he had an idea that it would be great to put some of this stuff on film and to pull together aspects of this culture. He knew Lee Quinones and brought Lee Quinones there to the art show and the three of us, that was June of 1980, the three of us were looking at each other and talking about what kind of movie we were going to make. And so, Lee, how did Lee feel about being thrust into the position of an actor? Lee was um, extremely conflicted because he was hiding out from the police. Um, as a graffiti writer, um, he was um, on the top of uh, the, the uh, sort of the graffiti uh, detective squad's list. Um, so he had good reason not to want to show his face on the big screen. So we were on this sort of narrow razor edge of trying to walk the line between trying to create something that was a kind of fictional pop, sort of Bruce Lee style movie, and trying to document real things with real people. Mm -hmm. And I thought creatively that was an, an incredibly fer fertile area to work in as a filmmaker, this this area between narrative and documentaries. We kind of take for granted now that hip hop is a global phenomenon, but uh, you were there at a time when the work that you had done kind of helped to spread things to a lot of places where it hadn't gotten a lot of exposure yet. Yeah, well, I, I sort of think of Japan as being the, the big bang of the hip hop explosion around the world. When we went to Japan, no one had ever heard of anything related to hip hop. And ironically, Japan was the world premiere of this movie before it even showed here in New York City. And um, so people were, it was a clean slate when we got there and the shock went both ways that uh, local Japanese culture was as shocking to us as we were to them, but the effect was incredible. Like within days, there were Japanese in clubs, scratch mixing. Um, they 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 were, you know, putting on clothes that resembled what we were wearing, and um, um, the, the the influence was immediate and really pretty long-lasting. Some of the best DJs have come out of Japan in the last 20 years. So as far as uh, the hip-hop scene today, with it being going from what it was when you documented Wild Style to this trillion-dollar global phenomenon, are there places in hip-hop where you see the same vibrancy that made you want to film Wild Style? Absolutely, and it's, and it's sort of the thing that continues to inspire me to make films. Like I made a film recently called Bongo Barbershop, and it contains... Um, uh, the, the film opens with this guy from East Africa. Uh, he's from Tanzania. His name is Belozi Dola, and he's walking around lost in the Bronx, and he goes into a barber shop, and he tells the barber he's looking for real hip-hop. And so, which is true, actually. <laughs> you know, it's like people are here from Africa to reconnect to the roots of hip-hop. And likewise, people from here are going to... Um, different spots in, in West Africa and East Africa to connect with the local scenes there. And there's very powerful local in, in their own language, let's say in, in, in uh, Brazil and in, in Portuguese and 
in Cuba, in Spanish, and et cetera. We could go all around the world, but there are beautiful, really vibrant, um, incredibly important local scenes going on that um, are as... Um, they are sort of what the promise of hip hop was all along was this kind of thing of people taking up hip hop as a form of empowerment um, as a way, way to to get their voice out to be heard and um, and and as a kind of local economy 